here we are at Big Eddie Campground and in today's video we're going to talk about some Dutch oven cooking. On the menu tonight is uh, pork tenderloin and uh, roasted roots. Roasted roots. And for dessert? Apple crisp. Apple crisp. Alright, so we have a Dutch oven here. And uh, it's, this one's cast iron, and it's uh, basically if you don't have an oven, so you people on the river who may be traveling downstream probably can't carry an oven with you, so they're super useful. And you guys in schoolies, sometimes you don't have an oven in the bus as well, so it's a great little tool so you can cook on. Anything you would bake in an oven, you can bake in this. So um, what I really like about this style of Dutch is it's got this lip at the top, so you can put charcoal briquettes on top, so that's your top heat and then you put your charcoal briquettes underneath and then again, I again highly recommend ones with feet because if you don't get the feet the uh, the Dutch oven the cast iron that basically crushes your coals and you don't get airflow underneath so the feet and the and the lip are really useful so with uh, cast iron I find that uh, they hold the heat really well and they uh, they tend to cook a little bit more even so I, I like them for that aspect of it um, but when I'm canoeing they're really heavy so I have an a, a aluminum one that's coated with some sort of I don't know what's called it's some sort of the metal so that doesn't make it make it poisonous I suppose as aluminum can be but it's super light and uh, so that really works well and that's what we're gonna do with the uh, with the pork tenderloin but we're doing the rusted roots not rusted roots that's a band it's not a bad band roasted is a great band Roast, roasted roots uh, in this Dutch no we're doing dessert in this one all right so we're here with my very good friend Todd and we've been uh, so I probably should tell this story actually because it really kind of started a long time ago. Um, we used to hike 7.3 miles in the Russell Pond and fish that for a week and when you're hiking that long you can't carry anything heavy. So we ate a lot of freeze dried this and roast riceroni that and uh, I figured that's just kind of the way you ate when you're in the outdoors. And then we did this canoe trip, it had, it had been 20 years ago. Close to it. Yeah. Actually yeah because my kids, I remember on the videos talking about my you know kids being born and stuff like that so it was nearly 20 years ago. It was a long time ago. So we were on this river trip and I was still eating freeze-dried this and freeze-dried that and, and uh, we split up the meals uh, each day and Todd had the last meal and we get down to that meal and all of a sudden Todd starts hauling out like Delmonico steaks and potatoes and and and, 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 and Toll House cookie pie for dessert in the Dutch oven and I'm like what is this? It was like a religious awakening. It's like, oh my God, you can eat like this in the outdoors. And then I was a complete convert at that time. And, and so I went out and got a Dutch oven and we've been doing this ever since. So uh, really kind of, uh, it's an eye-opening experience for sure. So Todd is an outdoor educator. And uh, actually last spring, last fall? Yeah, last fall. Did a lab on uh, outdoor cooking and talked about the heat characteristics of briquettes. So, uh, what you, would you find out in that lab? Um, we set up uh, a calorimeter and measured the heat from a charcoal briquette. Um, and the kids during the experiment had to extrapolate how many charcoal briquettes it would take to bake a dump cake in a Dutch oven. Um, and it was it was amazing that the the experiment came out to 20 charcoal briquettes, which is exactly how many I'd use to bake something about that shape and size. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an 80, 80, 12 ratio kind of guy. I'd like to put like eight on the bottom and 12 on the top. You need a little more heat on the top uh, for, on, of the oven to, to brown things on the top. Eight, 12, 20, so we have to put some percentages. Eight out of 20 is what percentage? Eight to 12 ratio. <laughs> I can't do the math in my head either. Four to uh, six. It's only that. Uh, for sure, yes. Yeah. Put the, uh, so put a smaller two, amount on the bottom. Yeah, and the larger amount. Now, if we're doing this, we keep talking about getting a smaller one for dessert. Because yep. the problem is, is we, we cook way too much dessert and then we're stuffed. And so we need a smaller Dutch. We don't feel the need to fill that pan, I guess. So if you had, if we did get a smaller Dutch, what would you use for the, how many? So we usually do 20, so go down to like 12? Like an eight, and four and eight? It, I might start at 15 and if that was, one of the wonderful things about a Dutch oven is, is the the heat increases and then and then decreases. So you so you don't have you know 400 degrees for an hour. You've got heat that gradually increases inside the Dutch, 
and you get some, some good baking time and then it holds that heat as, as the charcoal briquettes um, you know go, go past their, their, their hottest point that heat starts to decrease so you can leave things in a Dutch oven if for much longer and allow them to bake for longer so you can you can play with the time as well as the amount of heat that you're putting in the system. I think also because they're sealed, you get that lid on top. They tend to hold moisture. They do tend to hold moisture a little bit better, so you're not worried so much about uh, about drying things out. Although sometimes we've been a little over aggressive with our blueberry crisp, and we boiled everything out of that and yep. it really dry. So um, definitely got to be careful with that. Cool. The other thing I really like with Dutch oven, Todd stepping on it, but uh, I like a flat rock because uh, if you can put the Dutch oven right on the ground, the ground tends to absorb a lot of the heat. Um, but the rock will tend to, and then it will suck it all out, but the flat rock will help sort of re-radiate and capture that heat and bring it up through, especially if it's wet or damp. So I like getting a flat rock to put my uh, briquettes on, and then we'll, today we're going to stack our, our, our uh, Dutch ovens up. All right, so Todd, what do we, what do we get going on here? Uh, we've got a roasted root vegetable Dutch oven style with onions, carrots, and potatoes, a little olive oil. And I was looking at that rosemary there, thinking I might sprinkle a little bit of that in there. You go for that. You can. You got salt and pepper in the drawer right there too. Garlic. Uh, oh yeah, probably should put. Uh, you want like whole garlic cloves in there for sure. That'll do it. All right, so doing a, a roast pork tenderloin. Uh, I got this as, uh, recipe actually from my friend Rick, uh, which would be a great one uh, to put together. And it was kind of cool today actually while we we're paddling and we got kind of wet, so it's a good sort of fall recipe. So um, got some parsley. I'm gonna mix up here, and the the, re the real recipe talks about blending it or putting it in a food processor, but um, we're out here in the woods, so we're not gonna actually do that. And then we got some garlic. And I'll put all the proportions and stuff. Um, down in the description so you can see what we have and then I'm going to add some salt and pepper to that and a little bit of rosemary which I don't think actually goes in the recipe but I have a hard time cooking pork without rosemary so, so there it is so we're just going to mix all that up And then, I'm just going to use some cooking spray to coat pork tenderloin, make it sticky, and we're just going to coat that like this, and put it in this Dutch oven there. We're going to start this inside just because it makes it a little bit easier while the briquettes are going. I lost my spray. Here it is. All right, so I seared the pork loins and then I dropped in uh, two pears that I've cut in half on the bottom, seared the bottom of those. And I'm going to take those out, those are hot. I'm going to line the bottom of the pan with some leeks. Four leeks to be specific. Leek! Leek! Drop my pork loins on top of the leeks. Oh, some good juices in there, we don't lose those. Throw my parents back in the pan. And add some sage. All 
right, folks, we've come down to my favorite part. We get to assemble the apple crisp now. I'm gonna take the apples that Katie cut up and peeled, throw them in the Dutch oven. Now, at this point, there are some options. If you like a drier apple crisp, you can sprinkle a little bit of flour on the top. You can add a little bit of sugar if you like a sweeter apple crisp. I'm gonna do a dusting of cinnamon on top of the apples. Set that over there. For the crisp, I've got to make enough crisp to cover the entire top of the apples, and I kind of really like the crisp part of the apple crisp, so I'm going to go a little bit generous, and I do about equal parts of oats and brown sugar. And I'm going to start by kind of mixing the brown sugar and the oats together. And from here I can see I probably need a little more brown sugar. It's not quite to the, the half and half mixture that I like. If you like a, a drier apple crisp, you can also add some flour to the crisp mixture. You can also add some cinnamon to it. Woo, my butter got away from me. I'm gonna throw some butter in there, dairy-free style today. And the melted butter melts all of the sugar into a fine, kind of sugary paste all over the crisp. And then you can pour it all right in on top of the apples. Spread it out. So it's kind of evenly distributed across the apples. Let that apple get out of there and not get any on it. Naughty little apple. And the apple crisp is ready for heat. What about you put cinnamon in? I put some cinnamon on the apples. Uh -huh. Would you like to dust some cinnamon on the top as well? Oh, I think we should. A dusting. Allspice or nutmeg may also be uh, applicable. You can throw some clove oh, in. Oh, get it! More. Applicable! Yes. I'm gonna throw this uh, probably eight charcoal, charcoal briquettes underneath, 12 on top. On the bottom of the stack. On the bottom of our stack, we're gonna start with the apple crisp. So I'm gonna put down eight briquettes. Arrange those in a circle like pattern to go underneath the Dutch. We deposit Dutch number one, the apple crisp, on the stack. And throw 12 more on the top. Uh, roots. Roast root vegetables cook at a fairly high heat, so I don't mind going with the 12 underneath. We might even be able to get to the, the bottom of some of those to roast up and caramelize. Ooh, caramelize! Meats. The meats! Coals are looking kind of gray. Yes, looking wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, I like to tap the gray off. You don't? Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. Why? 
no particular, you know, no reason. <laughs> but my sense is that it releases more heat. We didn't test tapping versus untapping, <laughs> but it's an interesting thought. It's an interesting thought. And the, the, without tapping, the coal continues to burn until it's all ash. So, is it really releasing more heat, or don't know? Good question. Well, it seems to me that the ash would insulate the coal and prevent really that heat from releasing into the cast iron. No, the heat's there. Yeah. And some of it's radiating off into the air, some of it's... So, if you want to tap the coals down, sometimes you just do this. And let the heat be free. Let it be free! It's free! You have to be careful if you're doing this with a cake, though, because the cake could fall. So. Yeah. You have to find your own Dutch oven style, whether you want to tap or not to tap. Stop! <laughs> Alright, roasted roots and pork tenderloin. Dessert still outside. Delicious. And the lens is fogging up because it's hot. 7.45, 8 o'clock, and then you'll get to sleep by, I don't know, if you're lucky, 8.15. And then this morning I got up at We're stuffed after uh, completely so I'll put all, all the recipes in the descriptions below um, how'd the stack work out worked out pretty well we had a few charcoal briquettes that never went but things things worked out yeah we had like, uh, the potatoes and the carrots probably could have been a little softer but they were still good they were still pretty good um, so have at it uh, bake away. You don't need a full oven. You can cook it with the Dutch ovens. And uh, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, do all those things you do. And uh, until next time, we'll we'll see you down the road or down the river.